Well, uh, welcome back, guys. Uh, we are in chapter six, I believe, and we're looking at Pachycephalosauria as a group. So let's have a look at this. Uh, so uh, we have already seen this cladogram, and of course, this is the cladogram that you guys are going to uh, perfect at the end of the semester. Uh, we had Dinosauria, and remember Dinosauria, the uh, Synapomorphy for Dinosauria was the, what was it guys? It was the perforated acetabulum, okay, which is basically this hole here, right, oops, it's not working, oops, right there, whoops, let me go back. So it's that hole, okay, right there. Um, so that was the, uh, that was the synapomorphy or the evolved trait that's what synapomorphy means for dinosaurs and then it splits right we have saurischia and we have ornithischia and of course for the saurischians uh, the synapomorphy is going to be uh, this pubis bone which is pointing um, uh, anteriorly okay and for the ornithischians we've got this a pubis bone okay pointing posteriorly so that's uh, the two major synapomorphies. Now, for Ornithischians, we also have the predentary bone, the palpable bone, um, and the teeth as well. But the, the ones that I really want you to focus on is the pubis bone pa uh, um, pointing backwards, and also that predentary bone. That's that bone right at the bottom of the, uh, of the jaw um, that doesn't have any teeth in it. Um, it is basically just keratin. It's a bone covered in keratin. And so um, that was kind of the major synapomorphies or evolved traits for Ornithischians. And then um, Ornithischians break into Lesothosaurus and Genosauria. And uh, Lesothosaurus is just a genus, which means uh, if you click on that, if, if we could imagine that you could click on Lesothosaurus here and it was a link, and it would maybe open up like the Russian nesting dolls, that one would not open up anymore. It's a dead end. We're done uh, with the cladogram at that point. However, it then goes to Genosauria. And Genosauria is not a genus. It's a very, very big taxonomic group. Um, and so, uh, again, you can think of it as you click on it, it's going to open up like the Russian nesting dolls and show smaller groups. And uh, do you remember what the synapomorphy was for Genosauria? So, Genosaurs meant cheek, Gena meant cheek, lizard. And so these had big uh, muscles in their cheek. And so the synap and the synapomorphies, or when you're doing a cladogram, the synapomorphies always go just before, like a hash mark. So you would do like a hash mark here, right? And then you would write the words um, posteriorly pointing pubis bone. And you would do here like uh, uh, cheek muscles for Genosauria. And where the name is, if you'll remember, that's called the node, okay? So where it splits is called the node. Okay, so Genosauria, we click on it, we open it up, and we've got two groups, Thyreophora and Seropoda, and of course, these are big taxonomic groups as well. They're not uh, the level of the genus, they're not at the level of a family. These are even bigger than that. Uh, so we have to click on them as well to open up more Russian uh, nesting dolls. And we looked at Thyreophora, and you'll remember the uh, synapomorphy for Thyreophora, was uh, the armor, so rows of armor down the back. And uh, we clicked on Thyria 4 and we, <clears throat> we opened it up. And of course, there's other groups in there, but I just want you guys to know Stegosauria and Ankylosauria. And the synapomorphies for those are for Stegosaurs, it's the plates. And for Ankylosaurs, it's kind of like the, uh, the armor on the head. All right, so now we're going to the other group. We're in a group called Serapoda. And uh, Seropoda, this is the group that we find are Ceratopsians. Um, so Seropoda is another group. And uh, if we click on Seropoda, it's going to open up like the Russian nesting dolls again. And we have these other groups here, Ornithopoda, and we'll get to Ornithopoda later. And this group, 
marginocephalia, and again, another big group, so you have to click on it again to open up the Russian nesting dolls and find out the smaller groupings. So marginocephalia also has a synapomorphy, and the synapomorphy here for marginocephalia is shelf head. That's the synapomorphy, that's the new synapomorphy that we're looking at in this um, lecture. So here it is, we've got our pachycephalosaur on the left and we've got a ceratopsian on the right. And you can see they have these uh, shells. So right there, and of course right there, uh, are these large shells on the back of the head. And so that's the synapomorphy for this particular group. Okay, so we will get to that later. Basic description. So uh, for these uh, pachycephalosaurs, they're all herbivores. And so remember that uh, that all um, uh, remember that all of the Ornithischians are all herbivores. And so of course it's going to be an herbivore. Um, it's bipedal. Uh, so this particular dinosaur, bipedal means it runs on two legs. And all of them are found in the Cretaceous. So we've been looking generally, basically where each of these groups of dinosaurs are found. And uh, these dinosaurs are found actually in the upper Cretaceous. So kind of like in that area there. Uh, the synapomorphy uh, for this particular group. So we're in marginocephalia, okay? And of course, marginocephalia breaks into groups. And for this particular group, pachycephalosaurus, uh, and, and the name, by the way, means pack. Pack means thick. And it, you can kind of understand that when you pack something, you can get thick. So packy means thick, uh, the, the cephala means head, and saurus, of course, means lizard. So it's a thick head lizard. Um, so that's the way to remember the name Pachycephalosaurus. Probably one of the longest names for a dinosaur. It's a cool one to remember with your friends. So the synapomorphy is the thickened cranial roof. And when you look at these Pachycephalosaurs, uh, they all have a dome or a very thick flat head. So here's a flat headed one, okay? Uh, either a dome or a thick flat head. And that's kind of what uh, differentiates uh, these pachycephalosaurs. You have the flat headed ones and the dome headed ones. So uh, the flat headed ones uh, have a very flat head. And you, so you can see looking at this um, skull here, that it's quite flat. It doesn't have a dome. Uh, you don't need to know the names of these. Uh, Homolocephala is the name of the group, um, but you don't need to know the names of them. Uh, these are typically found in Asia, so you don't find these ones in North America. Uh, now, some uh, science, uh, some paleontologists believe that uh, the pachycephalosaurs, uh, the ones with the flatheads, may be juveniles. So it could be uh, that uh, that's a juvenile trait. And as they get, uh, well, what we're going to actually find is that the, uh, the domed ones, there's definitely a juvenile trait. Uh, but with the flat-headed ones, some people think um, it might also be a juvenile trait. So the domed head ones, let's have a look at these. These are found in North America. And uh, so we've got the flat-headed ones in Asia, the dome-headed ones in North America. And you can see they've got these really huge domes on their head, along with uh, spikes and horns around the outside. So on that margin that they have. And that skull dome can be up to 10 inches thick. I want you to think about that. Um, that thick, 10 inches of pure bone. It's quite amazing. So uh, the largest pachycephalosaur known is Pachycephalosaurus wyomingogenesis, and of course it's probably called, well it is called wyomingogenesis because it was found in Wyoming. Um, and it's around uh, 14 to 15 feet long, weighs about a thousand pounds. Um, so uh, still a pretty big dinosaur, don't want to mess with these fellas. And uh, the question of course is, well what was that thick domed head for. If it's up to 10 inches thick, what was the purpose of that? And uh, here is a, uh, a photo of a skull, and then they've got uh, microscopic blow-ups of uh, lesions. 
And so right here, you can't see it in the big photo, there are lesions, and those lesions um, are blown up here. And so here you've had a bone that's healed. And uh, more than likely then, uh, the reason that that bone was damaged was because it was fighting uh, with another dinosaur. So what is the purpose for the uh, thick skulls? Well, that is one option. Uh, there are lots of different options that have been provided. So inter-specific combat, when you see the words inter, that means uh, not in the same species. So it might be the Pachycephalosaurus is fighting with the Triceratops or something else. Uh, intra-specific means of the same species. And uh, so for example, in this photo here, uh, these uh, two are in the same species that would be called intraspecific combat. Uh, it could be defense, a display um, to attract a mate or to uh, uh, ward off uh, potential uh, threats. Uh, of course, it could be more room for hats as well. And this highly scientific, uh, um, okay, here's another clip from Jurassic Park. Uh, we can actually see uh, a pachycephalosaurus in action with its head budding. See if you can find the Bob Backer um, a, a, um, character. So you'll have to go watch the movie. Uh, what he was talking about there was uh, that the way that the um, former magnum, which is the hole in the back of the head, the way it's lined up, it's directly underneath the, the animal so that uh, you have the spine goes into the head so that when it hits something here, um, it's, uh, it, I mean, imagine if the, if the hole was back here uh, and then it hits something, it might damage uh, the uh, backbone. So therefore, the uh, backbone goes into the skull here at 90 degrees. And that character, by the way, that was talking was actually the Bob Barker character. His name is not Bob Barker in the movie, but he's portraying the Bob Barker character from, or, or a paleontologist from the book. So we've already read about Bob Barker in the book. He's a, a famous paleontologist. So um, now, it does turn out then that with uh, certainly with the domed forms, that the growth of the dome is associated with development. So here is a couple of um, skulls on the, in this picture here on the left. These are different species. So one's a side-on view, one's a top-down view. And you'll notice that they have different sized domes. So obviously this one's really big. This dome's really small. This is a, a little bit bigger and there's no dome at all on this one. And these are different species, but scientists are thinking, well, maybe it's actually just an ontogenetic series. In other words, maybe it's just a developmental series. Uh, the one down the bottom uh, is called Dracorex, and there's a photo of it right here. And uh, you can see why it's called Dracorex. It looks like a dragon, uh, right? I mean, it's just, I mean, if you saw that thing in night, it certainly looked like a great big dragon. Um, but when you line these up, uh, so here is Dracorex on the left, and uh, then you can see as you go to uh, the next so-called species, uh, the horns get smaller and there is the growth of the dome. But then we get to the species on the right. Notice that the horns have gone away 
and uh, the dome is much larger and extends all the way down uh, the nasal area here. So uh, it does look like more of an ontogenetic or developmental sequence from youth to uh, maturity. So um, that's pretty interesting. Notice also that uh, the uh, pachycephalosaurs don't have an ant orbital fenestra. Remember that was right here in the skull of the dinosaurs or early dinosaurs. Well, it's in most dinosaurs, but in this one it's not. And so um, that was one of the uh, snapomorphies uh, for Archosauria. It's the group before the dinosaurs. And so, uh, you know, of course, from a evolutionary perspective or a Darwinian evolutionary perspective, the, uh, the whole uh, evolved away. So they lost the whole. Of course, that's the way the story goes. Okay, uh, geographical distribution, you can see that uh, they were only located in North America and in Asia. So you had the flat-headed ones in Asia and you had the domed-headed ones in North America and they're all Lake Cretaceous. So creationist thoughts, um, well, uh, we think that uh, pachycephalosaurs appear to be a single created kind. Um, the fossils are known for a very small stratigraphic uh, interval in the upper Cretaceous, and they appear to be fully formed. They don't have any transitions in the fossil record. And that's really interesting because the uh, stegosaurs and the ankylosaurs are the same. Remember that in each of these groups, so these three groups, these dinosaurs, which are all very different, just appear in the rock record without any transitions. So here is uh, that cladogram again. So you guys uh, did an exercise on this where you did the cladogram from Dinosauria, excluding Saurischia, uh, all the way to here, right? So not including this section, because that's where we are today. Um, and so you did that, um, but uh, I want you to try now for exercise, you don't have to do this, uh, but add to the cladogram that you did last week and see if you can add this portion here to your cladogram. And you can practice that. And so remember uh, that your synapomorphy here, okay, is shelf. It's the shelf on, uh, on the back of the head. Um, and uh, the synapomorphy here, okay, for pachycephalosaurs, remember what it was? So that was the uh, thickened cranial area. Okay, well that does it again. Uh, just a short one on the pachycephalosaurs. Uh, I think next time we will be going to the ceratopsians. Okay, thanks, bye.